podcast. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome to the X Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the X Zone Broadcast Network worldwide. If you'd like to give us a call, toll free, 1-800-610-7035. Email xzone at xzoneradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV, and our website at www.exxoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour is no stranger to the Exxon. Butch Witkowski is our special guest. He's the director of the UFO Research Center of Pennsylvania. And he's also the editor of the Journal of Abnormal Abduction Research. And uh, he's been investigating and speaking on the UFO phenomenon for nearly 25 years now. And to date, he's investigated or been involved in 1,506 investigations of UFO and alien abduction phenomenon. Uh, He's been on international radio shows, TV shows, and he's given numerous... um, speaking engagements at uh, conferences and presentations. Now, the UFO Research Center of Pennsylvania was founded in 2009 to look for the truth of alien existence with the use of multidisciplined investigators and researchers to enhance the fact-finding into the UFO phenomenon. Along with the latest investigation techniques and technologies, forensics, and the best equipment available today, uh, they may help bring about disclosure. Their primary objective is to pursue both historical and new cases that arise with sincere hopes of bringing resolution to some of the cases of high strangeness. Joining me now from the beautiful state of Pennsylvania is Butch Witowski. And Butch, welcome back to the X-Zone. Uh, my pleasure. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, thanks, Butch. Um, how are, are, are you guys still as busy as ever getting more and more reports? What's going on out there? Uh, yeah, a lot of triangles, uh, still a lot of orbs. Um, a matter of fact, right before the show, I just got a picture sent in that I didn't even really look at yet, but it looks like the standard orange orb that people are seeing all over the state and pretty much all over the country and the world. Wow. Uh, would you say that UFO sightings are on an increase, Butch? Yes. Are the the basic UFO, or are they basically triangles, or are they the disc shape, or, or are they now coming in in a variety of descriptions? Uh, mostly triangles. Um, uh, recently, a lot of flat squares, which could be just the angle at the photograph or the viewer noticed it. Right. Um, the orbs, of course, being round and multicolored, uh, either white or red or orange. Mostly orange is the color that's most dominant. Hmm. It, based on based on any investigation that you've done into the orange color orb, do you have any hypothesis on what they could be or where they're coming from? I've heard everything from scout ships to uh, the U.S. government. Uh, you know the standard stuff mm-hmm. uh, means that nobody knows what they are and they have no explanation for them. Uh, you've got a you've got a. Um a uh, a journal that's that you're putting out called the Journal of Abnormal Abduction Research. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, the uh, journal actually is a a runoff of uh, if you're familiar with Lane a Lane Douglas uh, who passed away uh, back uh, just a couple months ago. Uh, she ran my Utah branch, and uh, we had talked for a number of times uh, about resurfacing mm-hmm. that she had the original JAR magazine. It was J-A-R, and it was a uh, journal of abduction research, and um, it started in 07. I believe it ended in 09. It just got sidetracked, and all of a sudden it was having paranormal ghost stories put in there, and and it just went by the wayside. It just it wasn't working. So we had talked about starting this up, and um, uh, Thursday, which would have been three days before she passed away, um, I had the first copy out to her to review before I posted it, and unfortunately she passed away that Tuesday morning. Oh, heavens. Um, The magazine is 
it's really a journal that's going to feature all writings from researchers that are out there, both mm-hmm. here and abroad, uh, case studies, uh, landmark cases, uh, and it's also going to be an outlet where we can highlight the different support groups that are out there and available for, for the abductees, being that there is no abduction uh, databases uh, at all, although there is a lady in Quebec, Canada that is working on one right now, and there is a gentleman in Northern California, I believe, that's working on, no, I'm sorry, Northern Oregon that's working on one. Um, you know, abduction has always been put to the side, but it's a very real thing. It's, it's, as, it's, it's as much of a phenomenon as the uh, UFOs that we see all the time. All right, but stand by. You and I have to take our first commercial break. We'll be back in two minutes. Exonation Butch Witkowski is my special guest. www.ufo.rcop.com. That's www.ufo.rcop.com. This is the Exxon. My name is Rob McConnell, coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to send me an email, it's a very simple email address. I've had it for 20 some odd years now. Exxon at exxoneradiotv.com. Butch and I return on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the Exxon Radio Show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at elizabeth.joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. a disease that you would like to alleviate through a natural means? Have you been contacted by angels, ghosts, or even extraterrestrials and want to validate these experiences? Or would you simply like to speak with someone who can help you find your life's purpose? I'm Dr. Joseph Mara, and I'm offering my services free of charge for first-time clients contacting me during the month of April. These free consultations include angel card readings, guided meditations, life coaching, and energy healing. If you have always wanted to explore these types of experiences but were skeptical or simply could not afford them, then take advantage of this free special offer. Contact me through my website, aguidinglight, spelled L-I-T-E, dot com, to schedule your consultation today. Until then, I offer you love, light, and laughter. Explanation of Butch Witkowski is my special guest. He is the uh, gentleman behind www.ufo.rcop.com. And uh, Butch, it's always great to have you on the show. 
Be, Jury, just before we went to the break, we started to talk about the alien abduction phenomenon. And are you getting more and more cases of alien abductions being reported? And why hasn't the UFO community taken as much care and attention to the alien abduction phenomenon as, as they have been with UFO reports? Aren't they just both part of the same package? Uh, yes, uh, they are. And... Um the uptake in abductions over the last two years has been 18%. Wow. Um, I had checked with Dr. David Jacobs <clears throat> excuse me, a couple months ago and said to him, did he notice anything? And he went through his files and mm -hmm. he said, yes, he did notice an increase. And then when we did the numbers on ours, it came up to about 18% increase over two years. The UFO community um, has made attempts at it. Uh, you know, back in 1998, you had the, the start of the MUFON AMP project, the Ambient Project, uh, which went by the wayside, I believe, in 2008. Um, I don't know. And I'm pretty sure that they've not published any of the re, uh, results of that testing. And the Ambient the AMP Project was basically they put a device into the person's home, an abductee, and it would measure temperature and a whole bunch of things uh, electronically, and then the abductee would also keep a journal. And then after a certain period of time, the, the device and the journal was collected, and all this was going to be put together. I think they had 13 or 14 people involved in the test. And then it came out that, you know, to do all the study and to get all the numbers and to do all it was going to be like, I forget, the it was an outrageous amount of money, so they just shelved it. And now I understand that they're revamping, trying to get the information together, and they have somebody that has volunteered to do the work. I'm not familiar at all with the AMP project. It's something we're just starting to look at as we got more information on it. But um, then also, uh, MUFON has uh, has now a um, an abduction group, which I believe is headed. I know is headed by Kathleen Martin, mm -hmm. and there's um, six or seven folks also involved in that. Denise Stoner is one of them. And they are to, as I understand, handle all the abduction cases that come in. But until we see the results of what's coming in and what they're finding, you know, it's just it's it's just another database. Tell me, but you, with your experience as being a former investigator with MUFON, the former chief investigator with MUFON, ha hmm. over the years that MUFON has been in, in existence, have they actually come up with any concrete evidence to say unequivocally that, yes, we are being visited by extraterrestrials from another planet? Not that I've ever seen in writing. No way. Mm. Uh, talk, you know, mm -hmm. uh, great talk at conferences, but throwing the information out there with the proof, I think, has yet to be done. Let me ask you this, Butch. Why do you think that humans are being abducted by extraterrestrials? Mm. Boy, it got me there. I'll tell you. Um... We'll take the food factor out. That was a very old movie that was on television when I was a kid. Uh, I think um, the study of DNA mm -hmm. is probably the biggest uh, thing gone. Um, I guess there's room in that thinking for the hybrids, you know, uh, the, the development of hybrids. But, you know, you're talking about, you know, our space brethren who've probably been here for thousands of thousands and thousands of years so i mean you can only open up just like cattle mutilation you know mm -hmm. you got one cow and you mutilate it and okay so you know you got one abductee and you go all over them inside and outside so what did you learn so there has to be something there uh that is um i would say malevolent uh I get that argument a lot that people say, well, they are benevolent, they're here to help us, they're here to do this, they're here to do that. Well, I haven't seen any of that, mm -hmm. but I have seen the other side. You know, you, you talk to one of these abductees that has been, a, you know, going through it for 10, 15, 20 years, uh, and they, they're, they're a wreck. Yeah. I mean, they, they're barely able to function, and uh, I, I don't see that as being benevolent. Um, if they were so benevolent and they took somebody to get whatever they wanted and they put them back, you know, I know why didn't they make them smarter, rich, you know, president of the United States or whatever. I don't know. Do you think there's a there's but, a connection or a correlation between the 
the extraterrestrial presence, the 